The Huskies get the win, the 100th in a row. And there's $100 bills falling down from the ceiling there. I think they have Gino R.E.M. on them if I see correctly. Of course they would. (laughs) Of course they would. We don't have a magic formula. We don't go into a lab and conjure up and mix up things and come out with young Frankenstein. We don't have that. We don't have that. So unless you're in our locker room every day and unless you're at practice every day and unless you go through, you know, what these kids go through every day and put up with what they put up with every day from uh, from us as a coaching staff, it's impossible to explain. This is After Hours with Amy Lawrence. Well, we're going to try to explain it anyway. We figured the best way to dissect 100 straight wins the longest win streak in basketball history. We thought it would be fun to talk to a former member of the UConn women's basketball team who played under Gino Ariema and also coached alongside Gino with uh, USA Basketball. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence on CBS Sports Radio and CBSSportsRadio.com. Who knows how many wins in a row they will have. Of course, the ultimate goal would be a fifth straight title for the Huskies. But the final call of Monday night's victory over South Carolina with Bob Joyce on the UConn IMG Sports Network. I had a chance to get to know Jennifer Rosati as the play-by-play voice of the Hartford Hawks for the better part of eight seasons. She was there for almost two decades. It's now the winningest coach in Hartford history as well as America East history in basketball, but recently took a job with the George Washington Colonials and is in her first season there. More pertinently, though, she is the point guard for the original undefeated national champ of the UConn women's team, the first of 11 titles with Gino Ariema back in 1995. And I remember her on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So Jen Rosati joining us now from the D.C. area. And Jen, not only did you play at the highest level, Olympics professional, but you also coach now yourself and have got a long career on the sidelines. When you hear 100 straight wins, what's your reaction to that? Well, as a coach, I, I'm happy with 10 straight wins, so I can't even imagine doing that 10 consecutive times. Um, you know, I think all of us in the business are just kind of in awe of that um, because it's to sustain that, not just the level of play um, and success, but just to get your kids to buy in and to be able to play through some injuries or foul trouble or an off-shooting night and just constantly come out on top. It's just, it really, truly is unbelievable. This is a completely different group of young women who is now 25 and 0 and has reached this 100 win mark. It's not the same group that won the four straight titles with the all Americans and, and now professional basketball players. What does it say to you about Gino Ariema and that coaching staff that this new group of young women is able to not only maintain the UConn standard, but now raise the bar. Yeah, I think, I think it's just amazing because the external pressure um, maybe was lessened and people didn't think they were going to be as good. But for, for those of us who played in the program, we understood that the internal expectation and pressure would still remain really high. Um, And that, you know, it's to, to not just have the best players, but have a group of kids that really buy into you know, being the best team every single time they step on the floor, being the best teammates, understanding what it takes to work that hard to make it look that easy. What are the expectations when you step on the campus in Storrs, Connecticut, when you join the UConn women's basketball team inside that locker room, Jen? What are the expectations? Uh, um, to honestly, uh, I, you know, obviously everybody assumes that uh, it's just about winning. Um, but the expectation is about how you prepare and how you play. Um, it's about what you do in the off season. It's about how you care about your teammates. It's about what you're going to bring every single day to practice mm. um, to be the best. And uh, I think that the wins kind of take care of themselves when you set the expectation about things that are in your control. Um, so, you know, it's just, you know, every year now, n- nobody expects them to ever lose now. <laughs> so <laughs> that's going to be internal and external, but I think that they really do focus on the things that are important, um, to the program, to the culture and to be able to continue to sustain that level of play, um, forever, really. 
Whenever there is a big UConn women's game on TV or whenever I've seen a game in person, especially one of these milestone games or the final four games, there's always such an amazing amount of support from previous players that went through the program. Why is that? Why is there such a bond from some of the greats, from some of the all-time greats, such loyalty to the point where they are still supporting the women who are playing now? Yeah, well, I think for for many of us to be able to be a you know witness the greatness and and be supportive, especially of Gino um, and Chris Daly and the coaches that we played for, to to be there to support them and celebrate their success, uh, is a big deal to us to show that loyalty because we know that we've all come and gone, like we've been there, we've not been there, and he has managed to continue to maintain that level of success. So he's the you know, he's a common denominator, mm. so we all want to make sure we're there to support and celebrate that. Um, but I also think it's just it's fun to be to watch this next generation create their own identities and to feel like you were a part of that. And, you know, like I don't have any, um, you know, stake in, 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 in Maya Moore, Brianna Stewart's success. I mean, they, they created that on their own and with their with their careers. But to know that I was part of a program uh, at a time where it attracted a Sue Bird and a Diana Taurasi, and then they in turn attracted Amaya Moore and, and, and Tina Charles and Brianna Stewart. It, it just speaks volumes to what how all of us feel like we're a small part of that success, and we want to hang on to that and be proud of it and, uh, and, and celebrate these young players who are continuing that legacy, again, not just to win, but to win the right way. So many people have this idea of Gino Ariema as gruff, maybe a little arrogant. He has a public persona and a persona in the media that maybe isn't the real thing. And we're so about behind the scenes and getting a look behind the curtain, so to speak. Jen, so you played for Gino. You still have a relationship with him. You've coached with him, USA Basketball. What is he like? What's it like to be behind the scenes with Gino Ariema? Well, I think that what all the players learn pretty quickly is that um, you know, he he's going to try and get the most out of us. He's going to push us every day. He's never, ever going to let us settle for anything less than our best. Um, but once you step off the court, you know, he cares about who you are as a person. Uh, he continues to care, you know, what my kids are doing and how my program is doing at Hartford or at GW. And um, that, you know, he's always got a pulse on like what every one of us has going on in our lives. And so it's never just been about the basketball with him. And he establishes that relationship from right from the start in the recruiting process. Uh, and he backs it up. So many coaches say, oh yeah, we have a family. Oh yeah. I care about my players off the court, but, but so many times it's just words. Um, he does it with his actions and, He's a very inclusive personality. He likes to have people around. He likes to share, um, you know, his success. And he loves hearing other people's stories. And just to be able to have a chance to, to share the Olympic experience with him and see how beloved he is with the staff and um, the people that work for USA Basketball, how much they love him because he's so appreciative of how hard people are working to help him be successful. That That's kind of how he is with his players. So, Yes, he has a public persona, but we all know he's a softie at heart. <laughs> you heard it right from Jen Rosati, former player at UConn back in the mid-90s, won a national championship on a 35-0 and team. She was the point guard and now has a successful coaching career in her first season at George Washington, but previously with the Hartford Hawks. It's after hours on CBS Sports Radio. So, Jen, this is a a debate that we hear whenever UConn gets attention, whenever there is another milestone reach, in this case the 100 consecutive wins, that the Huskies are bad for the sport, that their dominance is bad for the game of women's basketball. What's a reaction to that? Well, obviously I'm biased. You know, I, I, I would never think that, but I played there. And so, for me, it's a matter of pride every time. I turn on the TV or put on ESPN.com and see them covering the UConn women's team, and I understand it. And I'm not sure if my viewpoint would be different as a college coach, like being in awe of what they've been able to accomplish. But I think the people that complain about it being bad for basketball are people who don't like UConn (laughs) to begin with or aren't women's fans, women's athletic fans. Mm. Um, Because all I see is women's basketball not getting covered enough, and yet, when he accomplishes 
a hundred wins in a row or four national championships in a row, they get covered everywhere. And it's the only time women's basketball gets that much attention. So it might not be good for the other programs. And that's where a lot of the backlash comes is maybe it's not good for the other programs being, having to recruit against UConn, but as far as giving women's basketball attention, they do it in the right way because they've got not just all American basketball players. They have all American kids. They have all American students and they have kids that are really committed to being good people. So there's nothing bad about showcasing those young ladies that go through that program, especially with how hard they have to work to live up to the expectations. Well, how much does it force the rest of the sport, the rest of women's basketball to try to raise the bar? I, that's how I feel. I feel it every day. I want to, I, I talk to my team about playing at that standard, about having that perfect effort, you know, like you, no one's going to have a perfect performance, but you should be trying to anyway. That's the standard that's been set for us in the game. I've obviously scheduled games against UConn. I've, wa- I've watched games with my players, practices with my, with my players before. So for me as a coach, I think it, it, it should be motivating us and challenging us to try and live up to that standard. She played for UConn in the mid-90s, won a national championship, was a Wade Trophy winner, then went on to the WNBA and is now uh, getting close to two decades as a coach. Long time at Hartford, now in her first season with George Washington, also coached alongside Gino Ariema with USA Basketball. You can follow her on Twitter at Jen Rosati. It's great to catch up. Uh, Really miss you. Always enjoy hearing from you, Jen. Thanks so much for the time. Yes, of course. Anytime. (laughs) 